Super Retro Force. Have you ever gone into a game cautiously optimistic due to previous experiences with that specific developer? Well, that's how I felt about Renatus. And today, I'm ready to talk all about how it turned out. I've been playing RPGs for years, and one company's RPGs I've had mixed feelings for is Furyu. I've played most of their games, and they range from amazing, like Alliance Alive, to amazingly bad, like Cry Machina. So when I saw Renatus initially, I was skeptical. On one hand, the game looks gorgeous with a very detective noir look, which I'm all about. However, after Cry Machina, I was concerned if I would come out disappointed. So today, I'm here to talk all about my experiences with Renatus, what I enjoyed, what concerns I had with the game, and ultimately, if it's worth picking up when the game releases on September 27th, 2024 for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC. So strap yourselves in, it's time to talk about NIS America's newest release, Renatus. So let's start off with what Renatus even is. Renatus is an action RPG that takes place in a realistic fantasy version of Shibuya, Japan. In Renatus, the citizens of Shibuya have a fear of magic and everything is capable of, forcing wizards to hide in the shadows and conceal their true identities at risk of being oppressed by the MEA or Magic Enforcement Administration. The story of Renatus jumps between two opposing character groups an MEA squad led by Sari that is attempting to eradicate an illegal drug outbreak and suppress wizards, while on the opposite side you have Owl, a volunteer group founded by Michiro that supports stray wizards and intervenes where the MEA is unable to. Kind of like a vigilante group, think of Owl as the Batman of Renatus. The MEA always has an eye on Owl, as they are considered dangerous. Owl is a small group, but they do what they can to support wizards wherever, which is something the MEA is all against. There is also one more group, a historical group, with a major influence on the world of Renatus, the Magic Guild of Japan. Opened in 1923, the Magic Guild of Japan was opened by native wizards to protect Japan with the power of magic. However, due to the fear of magic by the general public, it is now considered a terrorist organization due to the enforcement of the magic restriction law. These days, the Magic Guild of Japan continues to have an effect on the society by distributing the drug Rubrum. That is the drug that Sari and the MEA are trying to eradicate. The story of Renatus is very cliche anime. As mentioned before, you have an ex-police officer, Sari Nishijima. She was attacked and seriously injured by a monster, nearly killing her, who then was awakened as a replica that joined the MEA and now she works for the Magic Task Force, suppressing wizards. One day in the streets of Shibuya, she meets Marin Kirizumi, a 19-year-old college student that became a wizard and came into his magical abilities at the young age of 14, after he was nearly killed by a car accident. As a result, he's been oppressed due to being a wizard almost his whole life, and being looked down upon. He has the goal of being the strongest wizard that no one can defeat. So you have two characters. One that fights to suppress wizards, and a wizard that is sick of being controlled. They both meet, and the story takes off from there. While Sari is chasing after Marin to try and suppress him, as mentioned before, there is this drug called Rubrum that seems to transform ordinary people into monsters. Sari is trying to figure out what this drug is and why it has this effect on ordinary people. As I said, this story is very cliche, and there's nothing overly special about it but it's serviceable enough to enjoy. I wouldn't say the story is mind-blowing, but it kept me interested enough to want to figure out the mystery of Rubrum. If you enjoy mysteries and detective cop noir stories, I'm sure you'll enjoy it just as much as I did. As I mentioned previously, Renatus is an action RPG. As you run around the streets of Shibuya, you will run into various townspeople that want to fight wizards, and the combat is... well, honestly... It's not the deepest. You have two different stances in Renatus. In Liberated, or Attack, you can attack, or use special abilities. Every attack uses a set amount of MP, and while you're in attack mode, your defensive capabilities are incredibly limited. You have a dodge, but it's not quite as effective while you're Liberated. If you run out of MP or press L1 while in Liberated mode, you will swap to Suppressed, 
or a defense mode. While in suppress mode, you cannot attack, but if you get attacked, the game will slow down and a magic circle appears. When this circle appears, you can press and hold R1 to absorb MP, and with perfect timing, your MP gauge will shine. If you swap back to liberate mode at this time, enemies will slow down. Kind of like Bayonetta's witch time mode, and you can freely attack enemies with no risk of retaliation. Like I said, it's pretty basic, and the comboing isn't nearly as fun as other action RPGs, but it's fun enough and it feels very smooth, which is something I was worried about after playing Grey Machina. While in Shibuya, fighting is not suggested, because if citizens see you in liberated form, they will... Well, they'll post on social media about you, and if you get to number one on the trending list, not only will you be an internet sensation, but the MEA will chase you down and they will fight you. This fight is incredibly difficult and nigh unwinnable until very late in the game. So naturally, you don't want to fight while traveling through Shibuya. Thankfully, this fight, even if you lose, gives you an option to run away. The other part of the game takes place in a magical world aptly called Another. Another is a magical world managed by the guild and it's infested with monsters. This world, while fun because it's where most of the combat gameplay takes place, is incredibly boring. It's a single pathway in the same forest, repeatedly. You make it to the end of the pathway, open up a door, a wind blows, and you learn a spell to open an entrance to another. Well, another another. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, the gameplay loop is very, very repetitive and it doesn't really change. Other than combat, there are side quests in Shibuya, but they're very few and far in between, and usually consist of running from place to place, talking to various NPCs. Not only is it kind of bland and felt very pointless, it usually results in the world figuring out that you're a wizard, then you get killed by the MEA because you can't make it to a safe zone in time. I'll be honest, I got to a point where I just started ignoring the side quests because I didn't find them worth the hassle. Okay. I know the game sounds a bit off and not the greatest in the world, but let's talk about the presentation of this game. The graphics and art style and the music. The graphics, they're some of the weirdest graphics I have ever seen. They go from absolutely gorgeous to some models looking like they're pulled out of a PS1 or PS2 game. Seriously, I noticed this mostly with the chief of the MEA. I don't know what happened with him, but his model seems to be substantially lower quality than the entirety of the game. Generally though, the game looks amazing. Shibuya looks gorgeous as you're out exploring it. Another, while it looks very similar every time you enter it, it gives the perfect vibe of being in an abandoned magical forest. As for the art style, it's very detective-like, and I love it. It has that dark, campy look you'd expect from almost every detective mystery anime. It's really hard to explain, but the art style really fits the style of game, and it really brings you into the whole experience. Furyu really nailed it with setting the mood. And as for the sound and music, the voice acting in Reynatus, it's only in Japanese. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of Japanese voice acting, which sounds odd coming from someone who lives and breathes JRPGs, but it really is just a personal preference. However, in Reynatus, it makes sense. Reynatus takes place in Japan. It would be weird if everyone was speaking English. Would I have liked English for my own personal enjoyment? Yes, but for this game setting, it's fine, I guess. Beyond the voice acting, I love the music, which isn't a shock. Reynatus was composed by Yoko Shimomura, probably most known for Kingdom Hearts fame. She doesn't disappoint. I really enjoy the music of Reynatus, and honestly, while no particular piece of music stands out, I can't say I'm disappointed in any of the music. This all adds to the experience visually for, I'd say, 9.9 .9 out of 10. Why dock the point one mark? That weird model of the MEA chief. It just makes me laugh thinking about it. Okay, so Reynatus has some of the weirdest pacing I have ever experienced in any video game ever. When I finished Reynatus, I spent 22 hours, which is incredibly short for an action RPG. But the weird thing is, the chapters are like really, really short. At 22 hours long, there are 33 chapters. The chapters range anywhere from like 5 minutes long to 30 minutes long. There were several times during the game where I was like, what? Because I didn't do anything during a chapter and it just ended. Or other points where I felt like I skipped a chapter. On the plus side, chapters are short and concise, and it makes you feel like you've accomplished a whole lot. You could sit and play for an hour and be like, wow, I just completed five chapters. 
As I said, Raynaudis only took me 22 hours to play through, so it's a relatively short JRPG, with very minimal replay value, unless trophies are your thing. I can 100% say I don't have any intention on playing the game again, but my one time I played through it, it was enjoyable enough. So there you have it, Raynaudis is an interesting action JRPG and it's enjoyable enough to keep you interested in the story. Who would I suggest it to? I would suggest Raynaudis to anyone who enjoys campy detective stories with a little bit of a supernatural twist. If I'm being honest though, I wouldn't suggest buying it at full price, unless you're really into this style of game. What do you think about Raynaudis after this review? Are you interested in the game, or are you going to pass on it? Let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you enjoyed this review and want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any other of my videos. Haven't had enough of Shinky JRPGs? Why not check out my Cry Machina review that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? It's ridiculous, I absolutely despised it, but I had a lot of fun reviewing it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, this has been Shinky, and as always, have a wonderful day.